It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes a restoration project demands the attention of the whole workshop crew, and that's exactly what's happening this week. Steve's going to be looking at the motor that we're using for the project, Glenn is going to be turning out some swing arms, and Daryl, Jesse and Bo are going to be fabricating a drive sprocket. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. During our part hunt, we were lucky enough to land ourselves one original drive sprocket, but unluckily we couldn't find another one. We explored a few options for obtaining a new one until we decided to make our own. Yeah, we pulled this one apart. This is an original hub that we've got, but we've only got one and that's our issue. We try and do a lot of stuff here in house. We're going to press one of these using three parts. We've got the uh, outer ring, inner ring, and then we've got another item we're going to dish. Bo's done a bit of this stuff before, so I'm, I'm relying on Bo. He's going to help me out here. We've got our lower die, the piece that we're going to press and dish, and our top die, which will go down and push through. What did you do this process on? Just took three return rollers. That's right. <laughs> you should know that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so this is the bottom die? Yeah, this, this is the bottom die that we're going to press through. I've drawn a circle around it and the one on there so we're centred. Uh, I'll just hold this one bow and lift that other one up onto it. How do you know how deep to press it? Well, actually, we want 49 mil, and this one's 50 mil, so that'll go. That'll work perfect for us. This is sort of the crucial bit, trying to just line everything up, get it as good as you can. The end result will be. Very Perfect. Good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be as good as your your um, prep. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back. Just have a spray. Sometimes, when pressing steel like this, it wants to grab and can throw the dies out of alignment. A little bit of lubrication can help prevent this. Good. Ready? Ready to start her up? Would you like me to stand here? Yes, I'd like you to drive. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my job's complete now. Yeah. Thank you. Checking here, Daryl. Oh, I'm just going to double check the, the, the depth of the dish. Yeah, it's 50, 49 to 50. Yep. Because we're going to machine it, it won't matter because we can take that extra mill off the yeah. machine. Pretty close to 50 now. I'll go about 52 and then spring back about 10 mil. Almost 50 now. Yeah, almost 50. Yeah. Back up to about 47 again by a little bit. Yeah. It's about 48. Hard to get a good read on it, but yeah. The boys take off the dies and measure a little bit more accurately. Probably a tad too far, but we're going to just flip him over and press him back a fraction. And that way we'll be able to measure it better because it'll be upside down. It won't be hidden in the rim. They've pressed a little bit too far, but with a gentle press on the other side, they should be able to get it to the height they need.
That's exactly what you wanted. Yep. What's that in inches? Just under two inches. Exactly what we wanted. Exactly what Bo said we'd get. Thank you, Bo. All right, Bo. All good. Perfect, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love it when Bo makes me look good. <laughs> A few weeks ago, we sourced an engine for this project. When it arrived, Steve got to work testing it out to make sure it actually worked. Uh, it's out of a, I think like a 1996 Toyota Hilux, so okay. it's a three litre diesel. So it should be perfect for what we want. Good, reliable, reasonable power and torque, easy, simple. Once we put it in, we basically just set and forget it. With an AC compressor? <laughs> With an AC compressor. Perfect. Except it's not going to make it into the tank with the AC compressor. But we're just going to try and jury rig it up so that we can start it and make sure that the thing runs because we don't want to go through all the effort of building all the mountings, adapting it to the drive system and everything just to find that the engine doesn't work. I just want to try and use a connector for the starter motor. So the key electrical connections that we need to make for the engine is we've got to have the starter motor so that we can turn the engine over. There's also a fuel shutoff solenoid in the injector pump for the diesel so we've got to supply power to that and as long as we've got that and the engine will turn over it's going to, it's going to start. So we'll use the original fuel filter so the fuel goes into the fuel filter into the injector pump then it comes out of a return line back into the back into the tank. This is probably going to look the dodgiest dodgiest set of wiring ever. Uh, I don't know if it'll be the dodgiest wiring <coughs> ever. Okay, so now it's going through the system. Goes through the fuel filter into the injector pump and it's starting to dribble out of the return line. Means we're good to, good to run and start it. This is the throttle, so fingers crossed, let's see if we can make some noise. Whoa, everything's falling off. It's all jumping off. I just want to crack off a couple of the fuel injectors um, and crank the engine over and we can see if there's fuel coming out of it. <clears throat> Alright. It'll take more than a pesky little Hilux motor to stop this man. Instead of going out of like a pool in a china shop, uh, I took a bit of time to look at the wiring plug for the fuel shut off solenoid and realised that I had the wrong pin connected up, so <laughs> I've fixed that up. It also gave me a chance to take a bit of a deep breath and um, have some safety stuff in hand, which is this. When you first start them up, they could run away. That's right. where the engine RPM goes to like maximum or higher than that. Okay. And it's unlike a petrol engine that you can't just switch them off by turning the spark off, the quickest and safest thing to do is to block off the intake, Oh, so you can stall the engine like that. I thought so you were going to say, show it who's boss and belt it over the head. Well, that could come, that could come later. Pumps working, shutoffs connected, starters connected. Do a little rain dance or a little jig <laughs> to uh, see if we can get it to start. Hey! So it's a, so it's a runner. It's a runner. 
It's a runner. How it's, good is that? There's probably still a few more fuel systems that we need to do. Things to the fuel system we need to do, but it's a it's a runner and it looks looks good. If you Can we put that. it in without a muffler? Well, I reckon it's pretty good to go like it is. Like, see how secure it is on the pallet? We can just stick the pallet. <laughs> just drop it straight, straight in. Straight in the back. Yeah. It'll certainly save us some time. <laughs> Unbeatable. That is so good. Nice one, Steve. Now we know that the motor works, Jess can get to work on the engine mounts. Meanwhile, Daz is hard at work fabricating some running gear, but he might need to call in the cavalry on this one. This is a privately run museum, so we've got a uh, budget to work to, so we have to think outside the box. We, don't, we can't get things cast, we can't send stuff away, we have to try and make as much in-house, so that's what we're doing here. What we're making here is the very front road wheel swing arm. Uh, this is where the first amount of pressure goes up against the, 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 when the tank's climbing or hitting a bump. Uh, but it only pivots so much. It's locked in with a shock absorber and a shocker dampener. We, what we have is an original front axle shaft for the front wheel. These were being cut off by a farmer in Europe and made into a, uh, like a carp or something. But we want to keep the original shaft if we can. So We'll end up boring this out. We'll have a shaft that runs through in here and it'll be welded in position. We've got the dimensions of, of uh, the wheelbase and from that we re reverse engineer what we need. We've got a rough, rough holes cut, very, very similar to this blank that we're going to use for the, for a, the uh, wheel hub, the front wheel hub. It's the same one halfway through a bit of machining. Yeah, okay, and we can do this here? We, do, we can do this here. We've got two, a big and a small lathe here. So who's, who's going to do this one then? This one's going to be done on the big lathe and Glenn does most of the work on the big lathe. You know, he's very proficient at doing what he does. So I've given him a few dimensions. We'll take this over to Glenn and uh, he'll have a go at uh, turning it down to what we want. Two nylon bushes. And then this piece will eventually go on the front here as a swing arm. It's only got to move you know, five or six degrees each way. Yeah, yeah, we'll run it over to Glenn and uh, let him do all the hard work. How are you, mate? I've got a job for you. <laughs> we don't see a lot of Glenn on the channel, but if you're a regular here, you will have definitely seen his magnificent work. So that's just going to slowly nick away at it until it's circular. Is that what's going to happen? That's right, yeah. 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 It won't be dead true because this here is this oxy cut. Mm. Right, so it won't be, it's not dead. So we get it near, near, near about. Should be good enough for what we need. Yeah.
it's just that two passes there. a lot of time and patience to get a job right like this. As Glenn was making these swing arms, Jesse went on to put together the front drive sprocket hub. He starts by welding it to the bench. A lines up A. These little packers space the dished part off the correct distance from the outer ring. With everything tacked in place, Jess goes ahead and welds everything together. You can only do a little bit at a time though, as too much heat from welding can cause the piece to buckle, throwing it out of round. A few days later and Glenn has just about finished the swing arms. Done. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. That'll get him out of trouble. <laughs> Here we go, Daryl. Ah, perfect, mate. As always, very, very nice. Ready? Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, that, right? Yep, I'll just grind these ends, these pieces off that we put there so we can hold it in the chuck. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Okay, thank you. Jesse's finished welding together the sprocket hub and now moves on to machining the surfaces.
all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.